Will you please welcome Diane Morgan, ladies and gentlemen. It's Diane Morgan. Welcome. Hello. Pick up a microphone and then you hold it near your face and then we're off. Is this Stuart's? That is, uh, no, I think these are fresh. These are fresh oh, new right. ones that have come out just for us. I didn't, I didn't think they were there, but they are there. There's lots of water down there. Uh, so, do you remember? But Robert's Web is my. It's not the best name for a TV show. It's clever, I, though, isn't it? It's quite clever, but it's not as good as Improvisation, my dear Mark Watson. <laughs> which, if you've been is that, in that real? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but Robert's Web, because he's called Rob Web, and he was yeah, about the internet, yeah. into, into web. Yeah. So that was quite good. And he also, was, did he present inside? He was in a web, wasn't he, when he was sort of dressed as a that spy? That would have been better. He yeah. should have been in a web, yeah. yeah. No, he wasn't. He was just behind a desk. <laughs> what did you, what was your various roles in that? I, I did uh, some sketches with Joe Wilkinson. Oh, yes, I know. Yeah, beardy Joe Wilkinson. He's very successful now. Uh, <laughs> it, we did some sketches together, some sort of green screen sketches. Oh, okay. They're on the internet. You'd like I think to I watched them. some of them. They're very good. I didn't realise they were from Robert's Web. I have more respect for Robert's Web. Oh than... no, another no. one you're thinking of. Not, oh, yeah. not the really good ones. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> the quite poor ones <laughs> okay. that we made for Robert's Web. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> good. And uh, so, well, you've been you've been doing comedy and comedy acting. You're in a Ken. You're in a Ken Campbell play. Was that one of the? Yes. Films? Was Ken Campbell the actor? Yes. Wow. Yeah, I love Ken Campbell. Ken Campbell, did you meet him? Um, I, I didn't. I went to see one of his 24 hour things uh, and yeah. then I got too tired and had to go home. Right, yeah. Because I don't I like, being, I like sleeping. I think that would have been, I don't think that would have been the one you did because that was uh, like yeah. in the 1990s. Yeah, that would have been what the one. the same one? Yeah. Gosh. Yeah, I know I'm ancient. Yeah. Not look it. Because um, <laughs> the first one was in the 60s. I right, think. yeah. I yeah, wasn't, wasn't in that one. one. I was in, <laughs> I was in so the 90s. You, okay. Because it was the first job I ever got out of drama school. I was unemployed for years after drama school. And I went to this bookshop in Camden, wearing this really weird woolly hat, because it was winter. <laughs> and Because I'd heard there was a notice board in this bookshop for actors that had jobs on it and things. So I went to look at this notice board, really miserable I was staring at this notice board and then all of a sudden I heard this voice saying aren't you an actress <laughs> and I turned around and I thought oh my god that's the guy from uh, In Sickness and In Health yeah. he was Alf Garnett's neighbour and uh, he said come downstairs um, I think I might have a part for you oh yeah, yeah. oh yeah, oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> dirty beggar <laughs> um, and it was weird, I went downstairs and there was a group of actors all sat in a circle. All the men were wearing red lipstick. <laughs> uh, but I, they auditioned me, I got the part, the rest is history. <laughs> I, I was on in, I think, the 18th hour. Oh, yeah, I didn't see you then. I was meant to review it for the uh, Sunday Times. Oh, really? Yeah, and I honestly, I got, and I love Kane Campbell. Yeah. Uh, and I just couldn't follow it, and I was too. T I was just too tired. But I love sleeping, me. Yeah, no. So like I going do. to see a twenty-four hour play was stupid. I, I nearly missed it myself. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. But I really, I, I loved him so much. I, 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 um, I wrote a, a thing that I realised I should have got him to be in. Oh. I wrote this thing with about uh, so a script sitcom about our local bar in Ballam, which is called uh, Goblins. We used to talk about yeah. all the time. But I, I, an idea of that. Um, a Scrabble club running from that, and I realised too late that he would have been a great person. He would have been perfect. But then also he died four months later, so it was good, you know, been yeah. annoying to get him, and then, and then, like, then he died. And then scrap so. the show. Yeah, but it didn't happen anyway. <laughs> so, you know, it would have been good to have him on it. Yeah, it's good died. to have Ken in anything. Yeah. He's yeah. always an asset, wasn't he? He was, he was amazing. He did fantastic on one-man shows. Did you ever see I never saw any of them oh, live, but I saw them, you know, yeah. later. Oh, well, dead now. Yeah. So, uh... <laughs> <laughs> but I've been having a very enjoyable uh, day, a weekend, watching uh, two episodes of MASH and bits and pieces of that, which is I loved on the radio. I was just to listen to that driving. Did always you? Came on. Well, yeah, when you're driving around, it's kind of it was like, oh, quite like late, about. wasn't it? Yeah. yeah. Well, that's because so for a comedian, it's fantastic. Mm. But it was it's like a sketch show, but it's not like usual Radio Four sketch yeah. shows where all the men talk in the same. Yeah, voice. we slipped through the net at the BBC, yeah. but they didn't want our TV pilot though. They turned it down after three years. Did they? Three years they kept us waiting. And then they went, nah. <laughs>
It's quite you're sort of mostly just yourselves, whatever characters you are. Yeah, very Which low energy. I like that. Yeah, well, we did. We yeah. decided because we both started doing stand up at the same time and hated it that we would do sketches. And we watched a lot of sketch acts that were around at the time, and a lot of them were sort of bound on stage, very, uh, you know, Oxbridgey. <laughs> no, no offence. Um, <laughs> And just be really full of energy and, and happy, and it was just awful. <laughs> and I thought, if we do something, let's not do that, you know. Let's just go on and just be normal. You know, let's tell them what's happening, what's going to happen, you know. And we did. Yeah. And people liked it. Set the BBC. <laughs> <laughs> they don't know anything about anything. Uh, it's a nice relationship you have with Joe, and that it's mainly about you, you don't just being, know him. being rude to him. <laughs> It's been, it's, it's been quite nasty to him, and there's a lot of stuff that is about him being knocked back by you. Yeah. As a friend and a lover. And yeah. Well, we decided to put that in because, cause, just because it's a man and a woman, people automatically think, oh, well, are they going out? Is there something going? It doesn't necessarily, <laughs> you could just be friends. So we always used to do start the show with, you know, oh, tell them we're not going out, <laughs> just to get it out in the open. It looked more like I don't want people thinking I'm going out with you, to be honest. Yeah. Your point of view. <laughs> <laughs> it's that as well. Yeah. Uh, and, well, you, you've sort of you've done a lot of different kind of um, things. So you were stand-up. I've done everything. You've I've done, done everything. I've, I've tried everything. Acting, stand-up. Yeah. Sketch shows, Sketch short films. Sketch radio, short films. I've been around for ages. <laughs> God bless Charlie Brooker. <laughs> <laughs> how did it? How did the Charlie Brooker thing come about? Because it started. People as... always ask me that. Like I did a raffle. <laughs> no, it's so, but it's such a genius character. It, it feels like it sort of came. It sort of it's evolved. It's basically though. just me, though. <laughs> <laughs> well, if so, then you're very, very funny because it's just like, like someone having, you know, looking at world events mm. in a slightly stupid, but actually yeah. quite. It's a perceptive. It slices through to the heart Thank of the matter. Thank you. Thank you. I had to audition for it. Did you? Yeah. So it was his. It was a. Was it a written thing or was it? It was because there's a character called Barry Shippey. There is. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I want to hear more about him. What, is, <laughs> what he's like in real life. <laughs> and uh, they wanted a female Barry Shippey. They yeah. decided, but they wanted someone posh, so that it didn't look like we were taking the piss out of people with regional accents. <laughs> <laughs> That's why she's called Philomena, because she was meant to be quite <laughs> posh. But then I turned up, I did my posh bit, and I said, actually, can I try it in my own accent? Because I think it's funnier. And they were like, oh, I'm not so sure about that. I'll go on then. So I did it, and, uh, and then didn't hear anything for ages. And then, <laughs> then I heard I got, got the job. Right. Hmm? I think, I think there's a lot to be said about it. And when I was doing radio sketch shows, it was often, you know, you'd do something and there'd be like a French character in it and then people would do that French accent. You kind of go, can we just do it not in a French accent? Because it's much, you <laughs> yeah. lose all the nuance of the... Exactly. If you bring on a character, you lose the nuance. Yeah, of I think it's funny. The more sincere and truthful it looks, the, yeah. the funnier it is. Yeah. If it had been a, a character that looked like, you know, it's just someone acting, it's just not as funny, I think. It's, well, I was, uh, there's so many uh, brilliant ones. And I was watching the one where you were um, talking about Die Hard Five. Oh yeah, that's one of my favourites. <laughs> yeah, but it's just because it's beautiful. It goes on and on <laughs> about how, much you, how brilliant it looks. And yeah, but didn't, without saying anything bad about it, it completely pulls the film. Yeah, apart. I think Barry Shippey starts the sketch off <laughs> <laughs> saying that. Uh, yeah, he thought he was like he thought he was watching the TV from across the room, and he he thought Bruce Willis was Jasper Carrot. <laughs> He thought Golden Balls had come back. <laughs> is that the name of the programme, yeah. Golden Balls? It is. Sounds like I'm making it up. <laughs> Golden Balls. It is yeah. based on the prisoner's dilemma. That uh, is it. I think that's what. What's it's the prisoner's dilemma? Yeah. It's the thing about whether you, if you have both, have an opportunity to have something, you can share it. One of you can have it. If you share, if you what, if you both say you're. What is it? What if you both say you're? I mean, basically, it's what happens in Golden Balls. If you've got some money, I, know, I didn't watch it. Then you can either choose to share it, in which case you'll get it. If you if if you both say, if you both say share, you get it. If you both I'm, say I'm steal, you don't get it. 
It's, it's a really good show, anyway, Golden Voice. <laughs> You've made me wish it had come. I'm a big fan of uh, game shows. Do you, watch you? Them? Do you watch them? Not really. Watch Tipping Point? No. Yeah, you'd like that. <laughs> that's, that's easier to explain than uh, Golden Balls. Do you know oh, those? Do you know what I was thinking when you said Tipping Point? What? I was thinking of that lesbian drama. <laughs> tipping the Velvet. That. <laughs> different. That different would make thing. a good game show as well. It's quite a different, different kind of. <laughs> Late night thing. No, it's, it's <laughs> like, you know when you go to arcades and you put 2p in and it goes like that yeah, on the shelves? It's that. Great. Oh, that's it's a game show I, love that. Th I love those things. Yeah, yeah. 2p things. I went on one. I went to Southwold. You must go if you, if you haven't right. been to Southwold. Because they've got some of those 2p machines. Oh, great. I put like in one pound twenty, and I only got about 10p back. So oh. you can't... Sometimes there's a digital watch at the side. Yeah. I won, uh, I won uh, little dice. Did you? And I won a crayon and I won a sweet. You're really I want, good. I want a sweet, and uh, I ate the sweet, and I, when I unwrapped it, it was like completely stuck, and like you know, like it when they've really been in there for decades. <laughs> it was in there, for <laughs> and I said, my wife said, don't eat that, and I, 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 ate, I, ate, I, ate, I ate it. But in Southwell Pier, you've got to go. Where is Southwell? It's like on I don't know, it's near the uh, nuclear reactor, in, uh, <laughs> which uh, <laughs> is in uh, Suffolk, uh, and it's near what's that place called? The, the, uh, what's, the, what's it called now? The, my brain's gone to jelly. I've done one of these. Chernobyl. It's near Chernobyl. That's where it's near. <laughs> and uh, there's a pier, but on the pier they've got this brilliant artist whose name escapes in the second. And they, they, put, they do loads of ar arcade games, but they're really weird things. Like they, uh, like they put your, some, hair, some of your hair into yeah. it, and then it gives you a DNA analysis of it. It's a kind of joke That's thing. That's brilliant. It's like a joke thing. But right. It's, and so you though. pay loads of money for it, so it's like an arcade. But you I get like an those things. Experience. Yeah, I did one of those. Tim Hunkin. Tim, Tim Hunkin, that's who it is. Thank you very much. They're like Wikipedia. Yeah. My idea. Good on. It's not a very, not a very efficient Wikipedia. <laughs> so no, I don't like game shows. No. Okay. <laughs> You're doing a uh, game show though, right? I'll do them. I'll go on. Them. <laughs> Mr. Mr. Game Show is your new show. Oh, that one. Yeah. Is so that a, is that a game show? Or is that a show about a game show? It's uh, well, we haven't. Sorted it out, yeah. Okay. <laughs> Probably gonna run through tomorrow. Oh, yeah. No, Tuesday. Um, <laughs> it, it'll have games in it. Yeah. And other stuff. Is it you and Mike Wozniak? Yeah. He's been on this, uh, on the, not, not the real one, the McCunther one. Not the real one. Uh, uh, so he's, he's not good enough to be on the real one. Nice. <laughs> <laughs> Just, uh, is there anything you can tell us about that, or is it all top secret? Top secret. Top secret. Okay. I don't know. No. <laughs> you interview comedians as well. It's a yeah, little theme. sometimes. Yeah. yeah. On the radio. On the radio. I heard, yeah. I heard you on the way when I was coming back from a gig. The Did other you? Day. Yeah, I listened to Who you. Who was it? <sighs> oh, wasn't the American girl? Was it? Yeah, it was. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> wasn't a good one. <laughs> I knew it'd be that one. <laughs> she, didn't seem one. To, she didn't seem to get quite get. Because it was from. August, you see. There yeah. wasn't many comedians. <laughs> <laughs> I'd have come on. I've been at home all the August. You could have had me on. Oh yeah. Yeah. Never mind. Never mind. <laughs> How'd you come up with your questions for the comedians that you have when you? I have sit them? there. I think. Yeah. I, well, I, th I used the, uh, have you ever seen a ghost one as well? Yeah, we did that backstage, have you yeah. ever seen a ghost? It was a really good answer. Yeah, I regret it, doing it backstage. <laughs> it's for the people who pay a pound. You get, you, get a, you get a secret channel. Or you can just ask me later. Yeah. She, has, she has seen a, she's seen a ghost and definitely has seen a ghost. Mm. It's worth a pound a month to yeah. find out about that. Uh, it's quite hard coming up with questions, isn't it? For it really is. Yeah. I usually ask the same ones every year. Yeah, I do as well. <laughs> <laughs> but this time I've got... I'll, I'll ask this one because someone asked me to do this one. It, I've got a thing called Desert Island Dicks. Oh, brilliant. It's not what you're thinking, though. If you were a standard on a desert island, what eight Richards would you take with you? It's a difficult question. You use, but you use there up are a lot, of, time. A lot of Richards. There are, aren't but there? it's kind of hard to bring eight to mind. It's easy to get about three, and then you'll find it's difficult. But I do. Oh, oh, I, I can do think it's Richard Maidley. Yeah, definitely can have him. He wouldn't be one of the eight. <laughs> I'm, I'm there. I'm, I'm there. Oh, you're already yeah, on there. I'm there. So what, what? I need seven or another eight. You need another eight. I'm the, I'm the Shakespeare. Richard. I'm Richard the third. Yeah, good. It's weird how that's the second time this happened. Richard. There's two more. What are the Richards ones. on there? Richard. Richard Attenborough. He'd be brilliant you can't, on the you're desert. You're not allowed to ask. If you ask the audience, that does not count. So <laughs> <laughs> 
It's about whether James you can think of eight different Richards. I can only think of Richard. I know, it's difficult. <laughs> I'm going to make this into a game show. <laughs> called How Many Richards Can You Think Of? It's kind of ruined. Later, on the Because people will prepare at home if they know. Yeah. If it's a game show, they'll come in and they'll have a list of a million Richards. <laughs> you should have some tense music playing. <laughs> I'll put that in later. Uh, okay, I'll ask one of the, So that's an old one, so we'll ask, that didn't work. So we'll ask no. you uh, a new one. Has anything you've written ever then come true? Like in the case of Charlie Brooker writing about oh, yeah. David Cameron. Oh, yeah. God, it's like Nostradamus, thing. isn't it? And then it turned uh, out he had done that. Well, it's sort of like Nostradamus, but re re prophesizing something that's already happened. <laughs> yeah. That yeah. isn't as good. No. If <laughs> <laughs> you think about it. Uh, no, because I write, you know, stupid <laughs> stuff. <laughs> things that couldn't possibly... Yeah. Or just dull things. <laughs> <laughs> Two spiders could have come oh, to yeah, life. Oh, yeah, yeah. God, you've really done your homework, haven't you? Something, That's my, most of your sketches are just two spiders <laughs> talking, talking about stuff. I like it. It's good. Um, uh, oh, great. I'll ask that one didn't work either. Okay. Uh, <laughs> why can't everyone be babies? <laughs> because, well, we'd all die out, wouldn't yeah, we? Yeah, we would, but it'd be where. It would be a great day, though, wouldn't it? <laughs> <laughs> it would just be a great day. You wouldn't even remember. You're not even conscious as a baby, matter. are you? It wouldn't matter. We'd be oh, babies. No. It wouldn't matter. No. 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 <laughs> <laughs> I think you are conscious as a baby. You you're forget not. It. You're not. You are. You're not. Like a like a seven-month-old baby. I don't think I was fully conscious until I was about nine. <laughs> What's, what's your earliest... I was reading, you know, the Guardian thing where they ask you what's your earliest memory? Someone's earliest memory was when they were seven years old. That yeah, can't that's be your earliest memory. <laughs> <laughs> I remember going to school for seven years old. Seven, where, yeah, that's so quite you, old. What's your... Because my earliest memory, I reckon I can remember the um, moon launch going in 1969. And I was under two. I was two then. Yeah, no, you haven't. You just think you can remember. I think I can remember it. No, I don't think so. I don't, it's not just that I think I can remember it. I think <laughs> I can remember it. I, th <laughs> I think you get confused as well with things you've seen. Yeah. You think they're memories, but they're not. They're photographs or things like that. Yeah. I think I, my earliest remember, memory was... Um, I must have been about... Two. Mm. And it was reaching into... Uh, a toy, sort of, <laughs> like it was like a wooden caravan. <laughs> that was one of my toys. <laughs> and putting bricks inside, and my brother taking the bricks out again, not understanding why he wasn't leaving them in. Right. Yeah, it's good, you know, it's, it's not... It's not a great anecdote, but uh, <laughs> you asked. <laughs> I wanted to know. I'm going to write it down as one of my emergency questions. Right. I wanna, but I wanna, what I want to find out is what is the... Um, what is the oldest that someone's been for their earliest memory? Oh, yeah, that's memory? a good one. That's what I want to find out, but that was difficult. So, two for you. But what if that's they're in good. a coma for well, the Well, that doesn't count. It's like right. they're, they're, they're like a normal person, nothing bad's happened to them. The problem is, when I was starting to take the piss out on, this tw on Twitter, people said, well, people who've been through traumas in their yeah, life yeah. will often forget their childhood. <laughs> so I thought, I'm probably better Just off. play along. Probably <laughs> just having a laugh. <laughs> I was just taking the piss out of whoever. It was some singer or something. I can't remember who it was. Then the next week, it was six. I thought, what's going on? Six years old. Do you remember anything before that? I remember when, I, definitely, because I, I can remember things before I was four, definitely, because I moved when I was four. Yeah. So I can remember stuff that happened before I was four, and one of my earliest memories is finding a, they're not going to be interesting, is finding a, uh, a bird that had fallen, a baby bird that had fallen out of a nest in the street. We've with all my done brother that, and sister, and then taking it home, and yeah. then it died. Oh. Yeah, it was Sam. Yeah. Okay, <laughs> one more, one more, and then we'll go back to asking you about your interesting life. Okay. Uh, actually, you might do more than one. Uh, have you ever put your genitals in or near the mouth of a dead animal? That was a waste. Of the, sorry, that was a waste. Uh, as, I like kettle crisps, but I don't think they're good as they used to be. Right? If you could travel back in time... What is happening? <laughs> if, you, if you could travel back in time... Uh, to compare any food of today with the, the original version of it in the past. <laughs> a... <laughs> what? Which food? <laughs> it's a new, it's a new, I'm running this one, it's a new one. Which food... Bring back, bring back parking. Which yeah. food... 
Is there any food you'd like to taste how it tasted in, in the olden days? Like, I'd like to go to taste kettle crisps from five years ago and compare them to them well, now. they didn't have much in the olden days, did they? Well, you know, they did, but things have changed. They just they? had pies and... <laughs> yeah. That'd be a bougie, like, I would be interested to go back and eat a pie from Richard III's day, wouldn't it? See would what you? It would, yeah, it'd be interesting. Well, do you, it'd probably have less salt and preservatives. <laughs> it'd have less preservatives. It'd be, have more rotten meat inside it. Yeah. Yeah. No, you're probably right. And on the whole, <laughs> it's probably best. Uh, we don't need to actually. Well, I remember. Oh, no. I d- well, these are the emergency questions. This is this is an emergency question that someone has paid to ask. They've paid. Yeah. How much? Um, quite a lot of money. God. The it was pressure. on part of the Kickstarter. I hope I can answer uh, it. So Hugh O'Sullivan said, "What is the most criminal act you committed as a child?" Uh, I've stolen a few things. Yeah. What um, was the most expensive of those most things? Most expensive. That would be the most criminal oh, thing. Oh, God. Probably uh, a pen. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I remember stealing a pen. Yeah. I didn't get caught. <laughs> Happy now? <laughs> you made the first mistake that many criminals make, which what? is submitting to your crime. <laughs> And now people can come and get you first. Uh, I, d- I didn't. I, d- I didn't. Re- I start. I started shoplifting when I was like in my twenties, like yeah. embarrassingly too late. I, I had a few shoplifting things in my twenties as well. I still yeah. shoplift quite a lot of things. Now. When uh, uh, it's around the, yeah, the Ken Campbell era. Yeah. I was shoplifting cheese quite often. Right. It was a Waitrose, and I didn't have much money, so I'd I'd often nick some just some cheese. Yeah. If you're going to steal it, though, you know, going to Waitrose is like... Yeah, get the good stuff. Well, I suppose, if you're going to steal it. Yeah. <laughs> what was the last thing you stole, then? Um, Apparently, the, the most stolen thing in the supermarket are razor blades. Oh, really? Yeah. It's because they're so no, expensive, they are too aren't expensive. They? They're really expensive. Well, that's why I steal things that I think are I'm too expensive, so if I feel a crime has been committed. Mm, so I steal... Pick justice. And, pick and mix, I steal a lot of... <laughs> Because I feel like that's also there's a there's a line there where it's hard. Yeah. But the other day I did steal. A, I I was going to steal a pick and mix, and now I know because I've admitted it on this and on Twitter. Someone said, "Well, everyone in W H Smith is looking out for you stealing pick and mixes," <laughs> which makes it more exciting, to be honest. <laughs> for me. But so I start. I start when I'm going to when I'm on the way to a service. I don't do it at service station. When I'm on the way to a service station, I'll be I say I'm on the M1. I tweet and say I'm going to steal a pick and mix. It's like I'm taunting W. H. Smith. What what pick and mix do you have? I like the I, I forgot what they're called again, but they're like a bubble. They're like a cola bottle, but they taste sort of. Bubble. Oh yeah, the fizzy ones yeah. are the non-sugary. Well, they're things. sort of slightly fizzy, but they're blue and pink rather than cola bottles. Oh, those ones, yeah, yeah. they're good. Yeah. Yeah, but the, the other day I went in and then I was going to steal one, then I got cold feet, so I put a packet. I thought I'd, 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 they might be looking at me. So I, I'm, I did like a whole bag of pick and mix, and then I stole all of them. <laughs> <laughs> and then I realised that is that is actually a, that's a crime now. It, that, when I've just stolen one, that isn't a imagine crime. Imagine if you'd got caught. I know. But that's it'd it'd have been all about. over charcoal. <laughs> <laughs> Richard Herring steals but pick I'm and mix. But I'm doing it to show. But is it morally, <laughs> is it... Is it worse to have stolen uh, like 50 pick and mixes in 50 separate occasions or just do 20 all at one? You know, yeah, that's, right, yeah. I'm still, I'm satirising myself there by doing that. <laughs> I'm potentially going to prison. Is it the thrill? Is it part of the thrill? Also the free, the free the stuff. Free stuff, yeah. <laughs> free, sweet, free sweets mm. is mainly what I'm going for. <laughs> with that. Uh, no, that's, that's revealed more about me than it has about you. You stole a pen. <laughs> you stole a pen when you were a child. That is uh, very exciting. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, don't steal stuff. It's really st- it drives the price. The reason pick and mix are so expensive is mainly because I steal so many. <laughs> uh, but it's kind of exciting to know people are looking out for you. What do you think would happen if I got caught stealing pick and mix? Like one, one pick and mix. What mix. one sweet? If just eating one sweet. I think you just get a caution. Yeah, I think you would. So <laughs> you know, but they would never. They wouldn't write that down anywhere. So you could go. They go. Don't do it again. Yeah. If it was a whole bag place. though. Yeah. They'd take you into the back room. Yeah. Like Ken Campbell, <laughs> living men with lipstick. Yes. <laughs> uh, okay. Um, oh, so like you used to uh, uh, box up worming tablets. Yeah. Is that genuinely true? Yeah. It is. A... <laughs> yeah, it's awful. I've had an awful life. What? What? What amusing things happen during? What worming tablets for, uh, dogs, for dogs? Worming tablets yeah. for dogs. You know, it's to stop them dragging their asses across the carpet. Yeah. That. Well, it was like 
10 hours a day yeah. just doing that. That was counting that, because they had to be like 10 packets in a box, so you'd yeah. have to count 10. 10, 10. Still, for, 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 for 10 hours? Still, like, steal them, couldn't you? Could have free, <laughs> many free worming tablets yeah. as you wanted. Yeah, you could. <laughs> <laughs> How long did you work doing worming tablets for? I, I only stayed there about a month. Yeah. Did uh, anyone last longer than a month? Were there people yes, that had been doing yeah, it for I years? I couldn't believe how soul destroying it was. You weren't allowed to sit down and you weren't allowed to talk. Because they <laughs> was said this it was in the UK. <laughs> <laughs> UK? <laughs> yeah, some communist. They said it'd slow you down. Right. And uh, <laughs> the, the woman who worked opposite me, she must have been late 50s. And I said, How long have you worked here? And she said, But. 30 years. I was like, oh, jeez. I said, why don't you run away? <laughs> and she said, well, I've got a family. You know, I've got a family to feed. I can't. So it was a massive wake-up call. <laughs> and, uh, yeah, I, I uh, went back. Because it was a summer holiday job. Yeah. So uh, I really pulled my socks up when I went back to school. Tried harder, you know. <laughs> then went to drama school. <laughs> Blew it all. <laughs> um, and you write horoscopes? Yes. Yeah. Issue. Linda Cockshot's horoscopes. <laughs> Do you right. have any good ones coming up? Do you know what's happening in the it's, future? I've done loads of them, you know. Okay. And uh, it's, it's exhausting. <laughs> <laughs> I've got other stuff on the go. Yeah. I might do some more in the future. They're very funny. You Thank should, you. They are very... Because, like, it's, it, a lot of people do, like, a horoscope thing mm, with a joke. Yeah. It's quite hard to do that it's, in a funny way. Yeah, it's hard to keep coming up with new yeah. ones as well. But they're very imaginative. Can you remember any of them? No. Oh, no. Okay. You'll have to look, <laughs> look up on Standard Issue. There was... I can't, oh. I, can't, I, can't do, I can't do them justice because they're really nicely written little things. <laughs> I can't just approximate, so I won't. Uh, do you, uh, do you, are you any relate? Do you, you know, there's 12 Diane Morgans on IMDb. There's an artist, isn't there? There's, there's 12 actresses, but I think two of them are you. Uh, right. Because. Uh, there's, there's one, did you see um, when you Google Diane Morgan, you yeah. click on images, if you scroll down, there's a woman with just in bed with her arse out. <laughs> Really close to my photos as well. <laughs> uh, oh, it's awful. I might contact her and tell her to remove it. <laughs> She's got her arse hanging out of the yeah. bed. The, the writer of A Fishy Tale was Diane Morgan. Was that you? No. Okay. You were, but there's two. I think you're four and eight on IMDb because you were in the Alan Partridge movie, right? Well, if you didn't blink. Yeah, well, you're down as that. Is right. It? So that's someone. Woman in someone's crowd. called you twice. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> number. So you're number eight and number four. What does that Dian, mean? Of the Diane, there's, there's twelve Diane Morgan. Do you mean there's, the a, there's a, who's number one? Not you. She was. There's one from like 1965. That's things. It's a common right. name. Mm. You've got to watch out. Uh, and when you do your interviews as, as Philomena Cunt, yeah, yeah. you know that's very close to cunt, right? And so there's. No. That could be rude, okay. Just turn, and spunk as well. It's like two rude words. Just be more careful in the future. Uh, <laughs> when you interview the academics and stuff, yeah. do they know what's going on or do they, are you just, do they think they're being interviewed by a normal person? Uh, well, we, we tell them as little as possible. Yeah. And um, I think one guy knew. It was the, the computers guy. Because right. he was a big Charlie Brooker fan. Right. Uh, but he, he played along, God bless him. But a lot, I think you could tell the others that just don't know what's going on. <laughs> <laughs> it's kind of fun, in, uh, you know, because uh, those academics, I've always enjoyed interviewing them because they're in their own little world. Absolutely, So you can yeah. ask something stupid and then they will try and... I love it when they try and answer it. <laughs> yeah, it's great. <laughs> and they go on for it. We, we record for about an hour those interviews so they cut down like you should right. see the stuff that doesn't go in <laughs> uh, some of them get really angry as well like the last guy on democracy he looked like he was going to punch me <laughs> honestly they had to stop filming and restrain him and they said can you not be so aggressive with Philomena I said no just let him be let him be aggressive because it's funnier isn't it if he's I wanted him to punch me just because it <laughs> would have made great TV. <laughs> <laughs> um, and you're doing a sitcom with Andrew Lawrence. 
A radio sitcom. Yeah. It's already done, yeah. Is it? Yeah, and Graham Fellows plays my dad. Oh, fantastic. I love yeah. Graham Fellows. Andrew Lawrence can't get on TV or radio because of the, because of the conspiracy. It's the conspiracy against him as a white man. He can't get on, <laughs> apart from all the stuff he does. He can't, apart, he can't, can't do it. Are you playing his wife in it? His girlfriend, his girlfriend yeah, right. yeah. How's that? That sort of must be a different fictional thing for him to have had. Uh, sorry, uh, how's, <laughs> how, how is he all right? He's great. Yeah, okay, yeah. good. Yeah, I've just been worried yeah. about him. Have you? Yeah. Yeah, I, I, I don't, I don't really know what's going on no. there. I know that there was some sort of Twitter thing yeah. with him. People were offended. But well, something no, I, re- said. I really, I think he's very funny. He's a very funny guy. Yeah, I think the thing is, he, he hates everyone <laughs> equally. You know, he doesn't just. More and women and ethnic people more than that. <laughs> <laughs> well, I didn't really get into that okay. with him. I should have asked him, but. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just interested. It was good fun. Was it? Yeah. Yeah. Is it? When's it coming out? October, mid October. Won't come out though because of the you know conspiracy against him. It won't. <laughs> It'll never. That'll never be on. Uh, pro- I'll probably cut that bit out, Diane. Don't worry. <laughs> uh, so <laughs> I'll probably cut it out. Uh, <laughs> I'll do an emergency question. I'll guess. Okay. I'll guess. I'll, I'll do this, a good one. Is this going well? I can't it tell. It is going. It is. I think it is going all right. <laughs> You seem, to be, to, you seem to be looking in that book a lot. I know, but that's what I do. That's my job. Oh, right. Yeah. Because I was listening backstage when Stuart was on. Yeah. And you didn't seem to be sort of... Well, you, know. you couldn't hear from backstage that I was looking at my book. I was. I was Were you? Yeah, I was really looking at it a lot. Because okay. he's, you know... Yeah, I know. <laughs> it was hard work. It was yeah. hard work with him. Um, what song would you like to replace our national anthem with? <laughs> because I don't think the national anthem is very good. No, it's awful, isn't it? Something that Jeremy I wouldn't Corbyn have sang it. You wouldn't have sang it? Nope. No. Even if you were the leader of the Labour Party? Yeah, even, even if I was, no. Right. no. What would I have? I'd have, uh, I believe, the children in the future. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. George Benson or know. Whitney Houston version, no. Oh. <laughs> no, too much. It's the same <laughs> song. Uh, so, uh, what would you have? Uh, well, I'd like, well, I think just something comical and funny. I, I tell you what I really like at the moment, it's because I've got a small child, is yeah. Elmo's song from the, from the Sesame Street. Oh, that'd be perfect. It would be where he goes, Elmo's song. It goes like that. It's, it's a song Elmo's made up. But you can change the Elmo to anything. That's what the whole point is, because Big Bird's annoyed. So you can change it to England's song. Yeah, so it could be England's uh, then it'd be, If you want like the Queen, you can go, Penis with the second song. Ah, 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 ah. Elmo's song. It's a very good song. <laughs> I, I like Elmo. Do you know the Muppet? You know Sesame Street? Did you ever watch it? I was more of a Muppet girl. Yeah, well, I was as well, but I do remember Sesame Street a bit. And, but now having a child, I watch uh, Sesame Street a little yeah. bit. Which I used to watch kids' TV when I was just hungover <laughs> at 4 o'clock in the morning when I didn't have a child. That was wrong. Now it's okay for me to talk about this yeah. stuff. Elmo, I think, is brilliant. I love him. He's, he's Which happy one was go that? Luck. He's is that the one, one in a bin? There's he... one in a bin, isn't there? No, it's not him. I like him as well. But in Elmo, I don't like Big Bird. I think Big Bird is a bit of a prick. <laughs> in Elmo's song, Big Bird comes and goes, Oh, I wish I had a song as well. Write your own fucking song. <laughs> He's been, in Elmo's song, he's going, Elmo starts singing the song, and, out, and Big Bird goes, Ooh, it's quite good, isn't it? He goes like that. He's looking like he's trying to be encouraging, but he's actually being patronising. And then there's Mr. Snuffleupolopolis. <laughs> I do not like him, and when he sings Elmo's song, he does a change, he goes, na 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 snuffy song, he does a little fake thing on the top of it. Does he? Yeah, I hate both of them. <laughs> I think it may be just the oversized Sesame Street characters are all pricks. What was the one in the bin? Oscar the Grouch, he's all right. Right, yeah, I like that one. And there was the Count, Counted stuff. Yeah, I liked him. He was good. And, but Elmo's great, El- I think Elmo's my favourite character from literature. <laughs> <laughs> because he's very happy-go-lucky and he's nice and he shares his song yeah. and he, you can tickle him he who, likes that who, who is your favourite Muppet? Uh, I like Janice from the band well this is oh, yeah, the this is who I'd have sex with out of, the, out of the Muppets <laughs> if I had to have sex with a Muppet was it the one with the long blonde yeah, hair? Blonde yeah blonde hair quite big match yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> if, if David Cameron had put his cock in Janice from the Muppets mouth yeah. that wouldn't be a problem would no one would care about that 
think it'd still be weird. To be <laughs> if it came out, do you think people were saying that's, you know, if the news, he's put his cock in the Muppet's mouth. <laughs> I'd love that. <laughs> he's probably put his cock in all kinds of things. I was, yes. at, I was at Oxford University at the same time. Oh, as David right. Cameron. Were you? Yeah. And I never did, I never put my cock even but like in a, a woman. <laughs> <laughs> So I'm quite jealous. But like. you must have. But, but this kind of stuff did go on, didn't it? I don't know. Well, I'd heard of the um, Bullingdon Club because all of my friends wanted to be in it, but there was no way he could be because he was like a comprehensive, comprehensive kid. Um, I think it's very hard to get into those things. But I hadn't, didn't really. I just mixed in a completely different world. Weirdly, the comedy was all on in the Oxford Union. So there was a, there was a co- weekly comedy club in the Oxford Union, which is where all those guys were upstairs. We were in a cellar right. downstairs. We could have, if we'd known. <laughs> We could have been like little Guy Fawkes and blown yeah. them all up, taken yeah. them all out. Because they were all there. B- Boris Johnson was there, Cameron, I think Osborne was there, I'm yeah. not sure. Um, so are there any photos? But they were trying to get hold of the photos. The photos of Cameron and the pig? Yeah. I think that would sort it out, wouldn't it? That yeah. Would, that, by, by the time this comes out, maybe they'll know. Oh, I'd love that. Yeah. Would you <laughs> <laughs> Just, would you love to see a picture of David Cameron's penis in a pig's yes, mouth? Yes, I would. Yeah. <laughs> I don't think it happened. Do you not? No. Of course it did. I don't think it did. So you want it to happen, and so you think it's happened, but I don't, it's no, been made just, up by a horrible I, man. You could just see it in his eyes. <laughs> but even if it did happen, he didn't have sex with a pig, he just put his penis in a dead pig's mouth, which is very but which different. Is, but, well, technically, though. <laughs> Not having sex with it. Yeah. I feel so, sorry for David Cameron, and I never thought that would happen. Do you? Yeah. What? Because I think the guy who's done it to him is a much bigger cunt than he is, and so we should be having to go at him. Yeah, well, they're both and, cunts. And I also think it's, they're both, they are both cunts. Thank but, you, um, thank you, yes. But also, I just don't think you should be able to just say something about someone and then it becomes true without seeing the photo. Or, <laughs> you know, I mean, yeah, I've made jokes about Debbie McGee, so I can't really come. <laughs> I've never seen the photos. But. So, you know, but it's, you know, it's kind of, it's a weird, the weird... <laughs> What have you said about David McGee? <laughs> <laughs> I, can't, I can't say any more. Right. I have to cut two bits now. I'm uh, <laughs> uh, all right, look, I'm going to come up with it. This is, this is going to this is gonna this blow is you up. Oh, go on then. Have you ever. No, this, I'm, really, I'm, I'm interviewing uh, Grace and Perry later in the. Series. Are you? Yeah. Like wow. that's, that's how. That's the calibre of people we get on here. It's very exciting. very exciting. But I'm very interested in modern art and I, I kind of create artistic pieces, I, I feel. Uh, do you ever come up with ideas for because it's kind of the same as comedy and it? it's just putting two things together well, I used to I used to I nearly went to art school did you there you yeah go. yeah it was um, it was either drama school or art school and at the last second I signed, decided to go to drama school but I've painted a lot in the past what, what kind of stuff did you paint oil paints portraits was it sold a realistic? lot of stuff did you mm. That'd be yeah. worth a lot of money, though. Isn't that? It's like Hitler. I know. Feel like having no. something owned by Hitler. Yeah. <laughs> Done by Hitler. <laughs> Similar. <laughs> Similar thing. Yeah. Uh, what kind of what? What kind of stuff are you painting? Faces. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Quite good. Yeah. I might go back to that at some point. You know, when it all goes tits up. <laughs> <laughs> That's not going to happen, no. That's oh, good. it might. Yeah. It might. <laughs> well, it could happen to any of us. That's the problem. We don't know. We yeah. don't know. You've been doing. Oh, well, I saw you doing this. Um, you recently, you've done this uh, parody of the couples. Is it the couples. Couples, yeah. The couples. Called the wankers. Yeah. Which is worth. <laughs> you're doing. But you do quite a lot of uh, sort of short film for the stuff. Do you? Is that fair to say? Or? I like a lot of short films because I think you know. After a minute, you're bored, aren't you? <laughs> we specifically made them really short so that, you know, because when I start watching someone's short film, if it's over like three minutes, I'm like, come on. <laughs> so uh, that's why I like them. I like them short. Yeah. I'm wearing a Cooper's jacket. It's hypocritical, isn't it? <laughs> I don't think it is because you're parodying the, ad- you're parodying the adver- adverts of it. Not but the I'll clothing. buy their clothes. Yeah, that's fine. Oh, OK. I like Marmite, but I do a joke about not liking Marmite in my re- current show because it's funnier to say I don't <laughs> like Marmite. I've been, invi- but I've been invited to be... I can't believe this is true, right? Because yeah. Mar- I've mentioned Marmite at some point in my past. Someone's got in touch asking me if I'll be some kind of like ambassador for Marmite. Really? Uh, and it's not like a paid thing. It's like you go on some website and you say, do you like Marmite? And the reward for doing it is a lifetime supply of Marmite. <laughs> but, I mean, how do they work that out? Because I eat a lot of Marmite. <laughs> 
<laughs> you know the big tubs of marmite. You know, if they, I have the little thing of marmite, that's about enough marmite for one piece of toast for me. Yeah, it sounds like they're going through your bins. It might be. That's I'm, cause I'm, that's great, though, I'm kind of interested to work out. I'm, I'm going to say yes because I want to work out yeah, how the, much the a lifetime supply of marmite. Of... I don't think I'd even be the face. I think I'd just be a mysterious figure. <laughs> I'm called upon, you know, maybe if there's a situation where marmite's in trouble, they would call <laughs> me out to go, no, marmite is good. If you could be the face of anything, what would yeah. it be? Um, <laughs> uh, um, having sex with Gemma Chan from uh, Humans. I'd be the face of that. I was thinking more of a product. <laughs> <laughs> just when anyone's talking about having sex with Gemma Chan from <laughs> Robots, from Humans, I just come on and talk about it. Do you think you should be allowed to have sex with robots? Because uh, it's a big controversial subject now. There's, there's... I think that's fine. Yeah, I think it is. Yeah. See, my wife really disagrees. I think it's going to drive us apart. Why? Well, she would see it as being unfaithful. Um, I mean, it's not going to happen for oh, 50 right, years. Yeah. But they're not. It's a robot. It's not a human being. Yeah. It's like women, most, a lot of women use vibrators, don't they? Yeah. And that is like a robotic... That's like a robot, and they've just gone, <laughs> don't bother with the rest of it, mate. It's okay. <laughs> so, so I know just chuck that lot away. I think that is more offensive <laughs> to men and robots. Than having, you know, just at least go, I'll uh, put, go through the pretense of having the bloke there as well. But he, he knows about it, yeah. and, and it's the same one all the time. Yeah. So I think it's different if it's like, if you're sleeping with loads of I'm different robots. I'm not talking about going out and having sex with hundreds of robots. So you've got your own personal yeah, just got robot. One robot. She knows about it. Well, yeah, she would. Well, I would be honest. That's fine. About it. Yeah. Well, not if she says it's not fine, though. You can't come into our marriage <laughs> and say, yeah, that's fine. That's fine, Katie. Don't worry. That's let him have his fun with I'm his. I'm sure robot. she'd rather the robot than, you know. Yeah. But I think I'd get a robot that you could change the face of and stuff. <laughs> it opens up an, an ethical debate, doesn't it? Because, like, in the future, it's beyond our, my lifespan, anyway. You're uh, poor unfortunately, wife. Is that. You'll be able to choose anyone, and who owns the. If someone wants to have sex with me and I don't want to have sex with them, they can just make a the robot of me, just like, and then bang, and they're having sex with me. And then that ha what? What about my copyright of my own image? I don't want people having sex with me. What if someone wants to have sex with me and then they get a robot of me and then they have filmed the robot having sex with them and then say that was Richard Henry having sex with me? But people might be having sex with your image right now. <laughs> you don't know. Be. You can't stop them. I can stop. Well, it's interesting because <laughs> masturbation is that in your, you know, you're fantasised about someone. So that's interesting. That's an interesting dilemma. I've thought about this a lot. Uh, but, you know, you could use that, you know, if you think how awful trolls are now, for example, imagine if they had access to a robot of someone, they could do all sorts of horrible things to it. Oh, they? right, yeah. And then so they could use it as an, a way to abuse an actual person. Mm. Yeah, so. So if you but, had a robot, then, yeah. whose face would you put on it? Uh, Gemma Chan from Gemma uh, Chan. <laughs> at the moment. What was, like, your first celebrity crush? The um, earliest one that you can remember? I, uh, that I really liked... Um, I think there was someone before this, but I, I really liked um, the blonde one from ABBA. The blonde one from The ABBA. blonde one? Yeah. The blonde one. Can't even remember her name. I didn't know her name at the time. Agnita. Uh, and then I liked Barry Manilow. <laughs> <laughs> and Nana Muscuri. Wow! And uh, there's a lot of singers. Yeah. Uh, and uh, the blonde one from Sweet, who was a man, uh, Brian Connolly. Brian Connolly? Brian, Brian Connolly. Brian Connolly? <laughs> Brian, Brian Connolly. <laughs> you had a crush on Brian Connolly? Brian Connolly. <laughs> what is happening? <laughs> Stand. Brian Connolly from the suite. Not Brian Connolly. Oh, right, not like, it's Brian, a puppet, Brian not him. Anyway. Right, okay. Who was, your, right, who was your first celebrity? Finally. Thank you. Uh, Dave Allen. Was it? Yeah, yeah. That's good, that's a good choice. It sort of still is. Yeah. It's like, you know, I never really got over him. Yeah. Oh. I know, it's sad, isn't it? I love Dave <laughs> Allen, he's amazing. I mean, not, not in that way. <laughs> I, I also quite like the uh, the spiff from Dad's oh, Army. Oh, yeah. <laughs> he was, was it James Walker or was that the character? That was James, the character? James Beck. Beck. James Beck. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. 
He, he, was it before he died or after he died? <laughs> he died very young. You, might, you weren't alive when he died. Probably not. I don't know what year did he die. I, don't I know. like him. I was, I was alive at the time. Well, so I liked him when he was alive anyway. Did he? Yeah. That's nice. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, sorry. There's lots of flies. Right. Strep here. There's just sort of a disgusting cesspool. Uh, and however much you clean up, there are terrible uh, flies all over the place. Uh, so, uh, yeah, cool. Well, look, um, I'm going to ask you about... <laughs> A question that I have thought of for a long time. I wish I'd asked you about the ghosts out here, yeah. but I'll ask you this instead. Have you ever seen a Bigfoot? <laughs> it no. was a gamble. <laughs> it was a terrible gamble. Do you come up with terrorist ideas? Because Charlie Brooker had some good ones. Do you come up with plans to, to wipe out lots no, of human beings? No, I, I wouldn't know how to do that. Yeah, I can't even fancy. drive. <laughs> That's a good one, though. You could drive. I mean, you could do more damage with a car. Than you yeah, could drive over people. Yeah. Back over. No. <laughs> <laughs> you must never learn to drive. That would be a terrible. And then you might be able to run some people over. Them. What do you think is worth? <laughs> worse, bestiality or necrophilia? Which is Be what worse? Bestiality, yeah. Having sex with an animal or having sex with a dead person or animal? Uh, and the, the um, animals. Yeah, yeah, definitely BCR, Yeah, really? You're I not... think so, because they're alive, aren't they? I know, but then... And, the, you know, I don't know, maybe they'd enjoy it. They don't care. <laughs> they don't care, they don't remember. Yeah, no, no, I'm going with the other one, okay. necrophilia. They're both bad. It's worse. <laughs> but why can't everyone be babies, though? <laughs> <laughs> we just, we don't think they'd be great. I don't just think it'd babies. work, no. <laughs> we'll be friends. We'd starve to death. I know, it doesn't matter. Sort of does though, we'd <laughs> die out. It would be fun for the day. For the day. <laughs> we would change the nappies. There wouldn't, yeah, no, exactly, you'd change the nappies. There wouldn't be any nappies because we'd be babies. And there wouldn't be anyone who would put the nappies on. You'd just poo in the, sh in the ground. And it would be beautiful, that's how nature would tell. Just wee yourself. I don't care, babies, I tell you, they love us. This is much stranger than I thought it was. Is would. it really? Yeah. <laughs> It's partly because the audience are just sitting there staring at us like we, mm. they've been forced to come in here. It's, it's like a dream. It's like it a, is like a dream. It's like a bad dream. It is. <laughs> <laughs> it is very much like that. <laughs> this will run it round. Do you have a favourite towel? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I think everyone like? does. Yeah, well, you'd be surprised. Yeah. Well, when you first buy them, they don't sort of absorb, do they? You have to wash them a few times. You know, if you first buy a towel, when you first use it the first few times, it just moves the water around, doesn't it? It doesn't soak it up. So you've got to find one that's like, you know, a good few months. Not too old, but not too new. Yeah. You know, and it's good size. I like I a bath sheet. One. Yeah, well, I like the big ones, but I stick, when I got a favour, I stick with it. Yeah. How, through thick and thin, literally. Do you ever wash it? Yeah, yeah. Right. Yeah, I mean, if I, you know, if it's in the washing machine, I use a different towel. But right. it's still my favourite towel. I'm yeah. thinking this isn't my favourite towel, the yeah. one I'm using. I'll be glad when my favourite one's back. Is it? Is it more of a comfort blanket? No. Oh. It's just I like it. And we, I, it knows my body. <laughs> it knows, it's learnt the contours, <laughs> where the dampness gathers, and uh, it just does the job. Are you a fan of memory foam? Memory foam? No, no. No. Are you? Never tried it. No. <laughs> if you could assassinate any public figure Ooh, yeah. and get Go away on. with it, who would you choose to kill? I've just got just one person. You can do, I could do a few. <laughs> I I would probably go for well say if i had like one bullet yeah i'd line three people up okay. <laughs> so that hopefully you'd get them all yeah cameron uh ian duncan smith oh, and uh duncan smith. what's that other fucking <laughs> arsehole called? yeah yeah him definitely him. hey Hunt. no the other one with the eyes <laughs> michael gove no, the... That's who I've got. Uh, Osborne, yeah. Osborne. Osborne. Just conservative. Those three. <laughs> I had the chance to kill uh, Michael Gove 
Did you? Yeah. Oh, I've had several chances, but I saw him unarmed, un- unprotected in the... Oh. Unarmed. So what would you have done? I had it... a beer bottle. I could have smashed him in the face with it. He was with his kids. Oh, and, you no. know. Also, I'd it's have gone to prison. It's not fair on them, is it, then? <laughs> yeah. To see their father bludgeoned to death. Yeah. I mean, even if your dad's Michael Gove, mm. you still got to... There must be some residue of love in there. Yeah. <laughs> But it was interesting to see. It was interesting. And then I, you know, I tried to write about it in the Metro, because I write for the Metro. Yes. They wouldn't let me, they wouldn't let me write about it in the Metro. The fact that I, I was regretting <laughs> the fact that I could have killed Michael Gove. I think because they thought I was revealing that Michael Gove walked around without bodyguards, and therefore someone might go, Oh, right, Ooh. that's a good idea, yeah. <laughs> ah. But, you know, give him a bodyguard. I mean, if anyone needs a bodyguard, not yeah. from terrorists and stuff, just from anyone in the street. Yeah. Michael Gove's the worst one, I think, out of all of them. Yeah. No, actually, you know, yeah. Osborne is it? Osborne's Osborne. Definitely, uh, Osborne's Osborne. Definitely. He's like a snake, isn't he? His eyes. He's disgusting. Uh, yeah, you know, I don't know any stories about him that I could tell you. Uh, cause was he there at the same time? He, I think he was, but he, I, there, if, he must be shitting himself about becoming Prime Minister because if he becomes Prime Minister, there's a lot more stuff that, that someone like Ashcroft could say about him than... Oh, yeah. I mean, there's, you know, yeah. there's, there's, there's sort of the semi stuff on record about him, but he's, yeah, I've bought the stuff about the pencils. There, there's, there is the stuff about the pencils. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if that's on record, uh, but uh, the pencils, pencil Osborne, pencils Osborne, uh, <laughs> is. But that, but then that's what's interesting about it is if there are these figures who pay for the, the parties and they can reveal, you know, they have them in that thrall. That's what's, that's what's terrifying about it, is the people behind the scenes. So if Osborne becomes Prime Minister, mm. he must be always worrying that he's going to be revealed for what he is, mm. the most awful man alive. Oh, assassinated. Uh, and, and so therefore, you know, these people have a power over him to do whatever they want them to do. Don't they? Mm. So that's the terror. So it's not about people, it's about the people with the money and with the stories that they've made them do these things. And then, I think, so, you know, I think, I think it's because it's so funny, the idea of a man who has a slightly red and weird face putting his cock in a pig's mouth. <laughs> it's hard to get beyond that mm, and think is, about yeah. the implications beyond it. Yeah, I don't think anyone could think of anything else, no. could they, for a good three days. <laughs> <laughs> Have you ever come up with a good uh, zombie film idea? My one's having Wombles as zombies or I've babies I've never really zombies. been into zombies. No? no, or vampires. I like, I mean, I like vampires from the 70s, but not like modern American young teenage vampires. I'm sick of them. There's a lot of them. There's too many. And a lot of zombies. Yeah. Mm. What if the zombies were babies, though, or wombles? <laughs> what if they were baby wombles? What if zombies were baby wombles? <laughs> <laughs> what then? <laughs> what then, Diane? What then? Well, I mean... Were you not prepared for that question? Uh, no. <laughs> what have you got coming up in the near future? Because I'm going to have to stop talking to you in a second. Okay, uh, I've got. Um, I'm doing a sitcom. Uh, Joe Wilkinson. Oh yes. Beardy Joe has written a sitcom with David Earl. Oh yes. Called Rovers. Okay. And uh, I'm going to be in that. Good. That's November sorted. <laughs> <laughs> and are you going to do more stuff with Joe, like the, as the double act, or as the? I doubt it. No. <laughs> no. <laughs> It's really good. He's too busy. He won't be busy for no, long. No, I, I, you know, you, you want to do other things, yeah. though, don't you? I mean, I'd love to work with him again, but maybe do something different, you know? Yeah. Keep it interesting. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, good. Mm. Well, thank you so much for coming along. My pleasure. Having a bad dream with me. <laughs> <laughs> it's been a dream for me. And a terrible dream for me. <laughs> 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 ladies and gentlemen, give a massive round of applause. Di Morgan, ladies and gentlemen. Well <laughs> we'll be back next time with Lee Mack and Jamie Gotham. So come along next week. How do you like them sky potatoes? <laughs>